Hey everybody, Coach Rob here, and uh, out on the road today on a long ride. You've already heard from me on a couple of other videos related to just some of the things that plague cyclists, you know, soreness, plantar fasciitis, and runners and multi-sport athletes. And uh, today, I, the, the other one I wanted to kind of cover is something as I am on the base of my favorite climb is that uh, something that plagues all of us, whether you're recreational, elite, or a pro, is that eventually you're going to run into the dreaded saddle sores. And saddle sores, um, I think that there's a, a misnomer about how they're started sometimes. There's many different ways that you can get a saddle sore. Traditionally, a saddle sore truly is a bump. What happens is, is that you abrade an, an area and a hair follicle gets infected. That infection grows hard and dense and then you can't sit on it because it's applying pressure to nerve endings. The other one that a lot of people will call a saddle sore is just a pure abrasion. And that abrasion can come from uh, too many miles and an old pair of bibs, so on and so forth. So let's talk about the various things that you can do to limit this. If you are new to cycling, and there are many of you because of the pandemic, please, 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 Stop riding in just plain old baggy shorts. Stop riding in jeans, <laughs> jean shorts. That is eventually just gonna wear you raw. That's why we have these fancy shorts and bibs that we wear, both men and women, shorts and bibs. They have a special pad known as a chamois. Also, you can buy inexpensive ones and get a lot of life out of them. But if you're new to cycling and you're new to all of this and you're maybe a little bit on the embarrassed side about how all this stuff works, guess what? You do not wear undies. Don't wear your underwear inside of a pair of bibs or shorts. That's another way to rub yourself raw. The, the moment you start going beyond 30, 40 minute rides, you start getting an hour, hour and a half or greater and you're wearing underwear. I don't care if you're male or female. I don't care if they're silk. I don't care if they're cotton. They're going to wear you raw. So stop doing that. Other thing too, as you start to approach 90 minutes or greater in saddle time and you're relatively new to cycling, please do yourself a favor and invest in some chamois cream or other things. So I'll, I used to say, and if you see any of my older webinars on um, uh, the DIY, you know, for setting up your, your trainer room, I did recommend something that I'm not recommending anymore. I don't recommend using bag balm anymore. I still use it in certain occasions, mainly old bibs. Uh, if I'm doing a really easy, longer recovery ride, 60 minutes to 90 minutes long, and I just wanna use an old pair of bibs because I'm not gonna really be wearing you know, much, I might, I, I might be just doing it indoor on in the trainer, then I will definitely use that. But if I am now out on longer rides outdoors, I'm not using it because it's petroleum based. So things like Vaseline and Bag Bomb are petroleum based and they will break down a chamois pad over time. So if you have very expensive bibs and shorts, don't do that. Instead, I've been using this. I've been using, uh, I think I put it on a, a couple of videos a while back. I've been using the uh, Body Glide in the stick form. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit difficult uh, managing that on the undercarriage, but it has worked out exceptionally well. I'm also using the new version of the Body Glide. It's actually a liquid. So I'm on this ride, I only use the, the one, but on even longer, hotter rides, I'll use both. I'll put some on the chamois pad and some eh, on, the, on the undercarriage. Here is a tough one. People ask all the time, how do I apply this stuff? Where do I apply it? So men, women, you've got a number of choices here. And it really does depend on your anatomy and where you're having problems in the saddle. Whether it's the, uh, you know, specifically the undercarriage, let's say the taint, the hoo-ha, you're having problems in those areas, then you're definitely going to want to butter those areas up. If you're having more problems like I do around the sit bones, then you're going to want to hit where leg meets cheek. That's the best way, and the most polite way I know how to put it. This is a, a PG, PG-13 kind of YouTube channel. I, I, don't, I don't put anything out here for kids. So if you're a junior and you get tickled with this, with this old guy telling you what to do with your, your undercarriage, I'm sorry, but this is just a fact of life when you're riding a bike. Uh, and runners, some of you guys and gals, you fight with this stuff too. It might not be true saddle sore, but you certainly can you know, get a rash when you're running uh, extra long miles and maybe not in the best running shorts. 
The other thing too is, is that if all of this, and you've had this happen before and you've gotten through it, and now you're dealing with it again and you're following all these practices, guess what? It's time to start looking at your saddle choice. As we age, as we progress, as we get fitter, or maybe we're coming back to the sport after being laid off for whatever reason, and we get onto that saddle that once used to feel great and now just feels like a torture device, it's probably time to rethink that. So you can go through all of the, the challenges of a bike fit and figure out which saddle is right for you. But even in bike fit specialists, it's difficult. There are some tools, especially like at specialized bike shops where you can literally sit in a saddle that measures pressure points and they can do a really good job of figuring out exactly where your sit bones are so that you can get the right width of saddle. Other things that are sometimes gonna be a little bit more personal preference is the length of the nose, the width of the nose, um, whether you have a nose or not on the saddle. Triathletes, we've really started to learn to get rid of the nose, especially on time trial bikes. It's really become the thing to do. It's very comfortable, you'll thank me. The other thing too that we have discovered over time is the quality of bibs and shorts. You can get some really inexpensive stuff um, online that works well for about a season or two, but I would say this, I don't care whether you're riding in super inexpensive shorts and bibs or you're riding the most expensive high dollar, you know, GQ magazine cover kind of stuff that's out there. And I'm not gonna name brands because I don't wanna get in any trouble, but we're talking about the bibs and the shorts that cost anywhere from 150 to $500. Guess what? They're done in about two years. So do yourself a favor. If you've got bibs that are in shorts that are that old, you've got a couple of choices. One, throw them in the trash. Two, also, just leave them on the side. And remember, those are for recovery days. If you're only going to be going flat, maybe you're on the rollers, you're on your trainer, and you're doing a recovery spin. And remember, the intensity factor or the percentage of FTP is somewhere around 45%. That's easy, guys. That's not hard. And your backside will thank me for it later. All right, everybody, that's all the time that I have for this. I hope this was helpful, and if not, maybe a little humorous. And if you've got questions about this, you know how to reach me. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your training week.